it is very important to note that the code on the right upper right of your screen causes the array objects reference to be stored as type object this is indicated by the type of the reference variable named obj ref where that type is object followed by a pair of empty square brackets now let's explore a little more deeply what's going on in the code in the upper right of your screen the highlighted code is code that you have seen before this code generates a random value and stores that value in a primitive variable of type int named random number the value of the random number is passed as a parameter to the constructor for the object of type prob05 my class a the reference to the array object is stored in a local reference variable named obj ref which is of type object followed by a matching pair of empty square brackets the significance of the empty square brackets is that the vari variable named obj ref is capable of holding a reference to an array object whose elements in turn are capable of holding references to objects of type object we know that the reference is assignment compatible with this reference variable because the object type is completely generic all non-primitive types are assignment compatible with the type object so let's put the explanation of the class name prob05 on temporary hold while I explain the class name prob05 my class a the definition of the class named prob05 my class a is shown in its entirety on the upper right of your screen the class named prob05 my class a extends the class named prob05 which is partially shown on the bottom right of your screen all of the code in listing 2 on the upper right of your screen should be familiar to you because it is very similar to the code in a previous lesson therefore a detailed explanation should not be needed briefly when the object of the type prob05 my class a is instantiated it saves the value of an incoming constructor parameter in a private instance variable named data when the method named get data is called it returns a copy of that value to recap what I have already told you the array object that is instantiated on the bottom right of your screen contains a reference to an object of type prob05 my class a 
that reference is stored in the only element of a one element array. The reference to the array object is then stored in the reference variable named obj ref. At this point, obj ref on the bottom right of your screen contains a reference to an array object. One element, which is the only element by the way in the array object, contains a reference to an ordinary object of type prob05 my class A. That object is located somewhere else in memory. This is what we call indirection. Indirection is a process where one reference points to another reference that points to another reference that points to another reference and so on and so forth. In the case at hand we have two levels of indirection. The reference in the variable named objref points to an array object. One element in that array object contains a reference that points to an ordinary object somewhere else in memory. Now let's return to the main method that began with the code in the upper right of your screen. The code that you see on the bottom right of your screen is a statement that follows the statement that I am highlighting now in the main method. So here is a question for those who have studied ahead. What is an anonymous object? Another related question for those who have studied ahead. What is an anonymous class? An explana explanation of an anonymous class is beyond the scope of this course. I cover that topic in the follow-on course to this one. Suffice it to say at this point that an anonymous class is different from an anonymous object. Getting back to the answer to the question, what is an anonymous object? An anonymous object is an object whose reference is not saved in a named reference variable or in any other type of named data structure. Consider the code that is highlighted on the bottom right of your screen. This code is inside the parameter list for the call to the printLine method. A new object of the class named prob05 myClassB is instantiated in that parameter list. Hopefully you just realized that you haven't yet seen the class definition for the class name prob05 myClassB. We will get to that class definition later. Instead of saving the reference to the new object of type prob05 my class B in a named reference variable, that reference is used to immediately call the method named get data from obj passing as a parameter a reference to the 
zeroth element of the array object referred to by the reference variable named obj ref therefore the new object that is instantiated from the class named prob 05 my class b is an anonymous object once again for emphasis the highlighted expression on the bottom right of your screen extracts and passes the contents of the zeroth element in the array object that is referred to by the contents of the variable named obj ref those contents are passed to the method named get data from obj which is a method belonging to an anonymous object that was instantiated from the class named prob05 my class b so what does the zeroth element of that array contain that element contains a reference to an object of the class named prob05 my class a therefore a reference to an object of the type prob05 my class a is passed as a as a parameter to the method named get data from obj which is a method belonging to a new anonymous object instantiated from the class named prob05 my class B so let's put the main method on hold again and examine the class in which the method named get data from OBJ is defined <laughs> 